Well, good day, and welcome to our story time. I made a journey recently to purchase a new pair of spectacles. My other glasses, believe it or not, the frames were $9 at Walmart, and that meant that they were susceptible to uh, adjustment by grandchildren and by falling asleep on them and uh, sitting on them and things like that. <laughs> and they got pretty rugged. And so it was time to replace them. And uh, I went down to see the eye doctor, a lovely lady, a believer named Dr. Taylor. In our conversation, she told me a little story. I had asked about her older boy who had had a brain tumor. And he was operated on and uh, seems to be doing pretty well, although it held him back a little bit, and he now is in the same grade as his younger brother, and they help each other as they're making their way through school. She was telling me how insightful this older boy is, although to some degree he has been held back a bit. For example, his younger brother was selected for the academically gifted class, and he was wondering about that and said to his mother, do you think uh, he guessed on some of the questions? He's wondering why he moved forward and he himself had not. Well, anyway, she was saying one day they were in a little fast food restaurant and had ordered lemonade, and the younger brother, drinking the lemonade, said, God sure makes good lemonade. And his brother responded, actually, God made the people who make the lemonade. What a tremendous perspective on this world. The things that we very often attribute to simply uh, happenstance are actually the product of people. People have done these things. And they have been able to do it because God designed them to be able to do it. Why are people creative? Why are they inventive? Because they were made in the image of God. And God made them not to run on instinct like animals, but to actually be able to think and to imagine and to create. We read these verses, and very often people put emphasis, as they may well do, on Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, which say, By grace you're saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. Now, people have a tendency to boast, to boast about what they have created, what they have made with their hands. And um, God says, listen, when it comes to salvation, you cannot do this by your own effort. You cannot produce this through your own works. But as soon as Paul writes these words, he continues on, for we are his workmanship. He's the one who made us, and he's the one who has to remake us, to, to refashion us into this new creation. However, he goes on to say, we have been created in Christ Jesus for good works. Good works are not the means of our salvation, but they are to be the result of our salvation. We can't work our way to heaven, but we should work on our way to heaven. Because while we are not saved by our good works, we are recreated through the power of salvation by God himself for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. And so growing up, I very often heard good works was a bad thing. Well, it's not capable of producing salvation. But it is something that should be the evidence of salvation. Christ died to produce a new kind of people, a new creation that we're zealous of good works. We should be careful to maintain good works. We should be rich in good works. We should show a pattern of good works. There are many scriptures that speak about this, and in fact, the scripture links our good works with not being unfruitful in the gospel. 
If we want to see effective gospel work, then our society needs to know that we believe that God has created us for good works. We are his workmanship, and that means we give him all the credit, all the glory for everything that is done. But what a sweet little story this was. This little boy who is struggling now with a limitation on the equipment he has because of the damage that was done by this tumor, and yet the sweet simplicity of his outlook on life and realizing that the benefits that we enjoy should be recognized as being the results of people who have been created for good works, and that God gets the glory. It was God who made people and who gave people the capacity so that they could create wonderful things around us. But in the end, it's God who gets the glory.